Hey guys, so I know I have some delayed videos to go up, but I, you know, I've been having, you know, I already recorded them, but I didn't, I have, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to upload them, my internet connection isn't that good, plus I've been taking a course in computer networks and stuff like that, that is taking a lot of time. In the meantime, today, and this is not the original, uh, you know, video I was going to make, but first, congratulations at Donald Trump for recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and persevering despite international interests and conflicts uh, in being fair to Israel and recognizing Jerusalem as its capital and moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So now I am going to be <sighs> criticizing an article by uh, some, uh, but uh, you know, someone that I think may be paid off by, you know, Arab uh, sheikhs and, uh, you know, the same money that is corrupting the UN, uh, which is Jeremy Hammond uh, from Foreign Policy Journal. And he has an article why the US moving its Israel embassy to Jerusalem would be illegal. Okay, so, uh, and this article was written on June 23rd, 2017, but he has been spamming my Twitter account with lots of nonsensical propaganda and he, he it's like he wants me to disprove him and says I have no arguments the other article he keeps he keeps on spamming it ju is just so ridiculous that I'm not even bothering with it but this one is easily uh, you know I can easily go around it so uh, this is about four months old, something like that. Uh, oh, hang on. Or actually almost six months old, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, he, um, it mentioned, it's, it was around the time where, um, when Donald Trump, uh, signed a wa waiver to delay the, the relocation of the U.S. Embassy from uh, Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem. Uh, so, uh, the, the author suggests that, uh, be, that relocating the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem would violate the U.S. law because of the U.N. Charter uh, that, uh, you know, doesn't matter, uh, uh, that would make, basically, violate the U.S. Constitution. Now, first, the U.N. and UNESCO are paid off by Arab, the Arab League, uh, you know, there are, there is a lot of Muslim influence in the U.N., uh, to to be able to have a fair, you know, uh, for the UN to have a fair, uh, you know, uh, policy in regards to Israel. They have unfair sanctions, and uh, it's really uh, a bad situation. It's like the UN is uh, uh, the fake, you know, you, there's a lot of things that you can say about the UN. The UN is basically the League of Nations. Uh, I don't know if you remember before World War One and Two, there no before World War Two. Hang on, yeah. So um, the League of Nations was created to prevent. Uh, uh, a, a world war, I think it was, yeah, um, but it failed in its original purpose, and after the war, w yes, it was World War Two. 
uh, it was renamed because basically they they say they made a new organization, but you can basically say they just changed the name. And so in the sense, we can see that a failed institution, just renaming it won't change the, the same re the you know the 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 the, um, the same fault the fault that created it to, to implode in the first place and the UN sooner or, or later is going to implode because there are a lot of interests that the the policies are not uh, the best and there isn't a regulating uh, uh, institution to regulate the UN. There is no kill switch. There is nothing to regulate it. So basically, you can't really trust the UN to be safe and defending the best interests of all nations. Certain nations have uh, some interests that are negative to the entire world. The UN is promoting these migration policies that are killing off other countries. And one thing it is that, you know, Muslims, uh, so-called refugees, can es escape to other Muslim countries. But uh, Israelis, they are the true refugees, if you think about it. They have nowhere to run from for uh, if something happens to Israel, so it is very important to to, to recognize the the the, the crucial um, the crucial role of the UN in the maintenance of Israel. But the UN is going against Israel. They are going against the best interests of the Israeli population. They are flooding other countries with Muslims, they are flooding everywhere and they want to flood Israel with Muslims as well. So in a few years, there won't be any place safe for Jews. We all know how much, you know, Muslims hate uh, Jews. So hang on. Okay, it was my older brother, but I couldn't pick up and I have no way to call him now because I need to put some money on my phone. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, there is no way, there is no way that the UN is going to be fair for Israel because they're paid off by Arab money, by Muslim money. And so they're flooding all th these countries with Muslim refugees. Um, so soon enough, there won't be a safe place for Jews. We all know that Muslims hate Jews. I read the Quran and the Hadith, and they have specific ways to treat Jews. And they, they really, it's not only Palestinians that have a specific hatred for Jews. So it is important to, to ensure that uh, at least Israel is safe for Jews. You, you know, it would be great if other countries stop accepting Muslim refugees and declare themselves a safe uh, space for Israeli refugees or any you know Jewish refugee that cannot have a safe place in countries that are flooded by Muslims. There is a really bad situation and then you have these sanctions they are enforcing on Israel so that they take in Muslims and the so-called refugees which are you know basically it's like Telling a bird to accept a snake in its nest, you know, just hatch a snake that is going to later eat its hatchlings. It is really counterproductive. We know what happened in World War II, where Jews were basically killed 
in en masse by Nazis, by communists, and even Muslims collaborated with the Nazi regime. Now we see a growth in anti-Semitism, we see a growth in neo-Nazism, and on the left you also have people hating on Judaism. So it is crucial now more than ever that we call out the UN on what they're doing. There is no safe place for Jews anywhere but Israel now. And even Israel is becoming unsafe for Jews. So we need to make something about it. We need to make sure the UN stops the sanctions and people like Hammond stop spewing hateful propaganda against Israel. So what Hammond claims is that because the UN Charter and Therefore, the U.S. Constitution oppose uh, the, the creation of an embassy. Um, and he is really care, you know, he is really pro-Palestinian. He is, there is no way to really argue with this man. He will just repost the same article over and over again, the same propaganda. He can't even... You know, discuss the points you have with it. So, uh, you know, they, 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 they. So they want that he wants to 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 contradict and say that the the declaration of Israel uh, of Jerusalem as Israel's capital is illegal. He contradicts himself a lot in the article, uh, but again, it doesn't matter. What matters is that. Um, There is a clear bias, and the UN is paid and controlled by a lot of Arab money. There is a lot of influential, you know, Muslim leaders influencing the UN. And as long as the, 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 these countries are in the UN, there won't be a fair treatment of Israel. There won't be a fair treatment of Jews. As long as we have countries that are not democratic, having such a high power to vote in the UN, there won't be a fair pol policy towards Israelis. There won't be a fair policy towards the defense of Israel. Everything will be pro-Muslim. They will always follow laws that will promote hate, that will promote anti-Semitism, and uh, there is no way that as long as the UN is functioning like this, there is no regulating uh, body for the UN's policies, there is no kill switch, there is no way that the UN is going to do the right thing because they are clearly, clearly paid off and they are in violation with the purpose to, with which they were created or renamed. Um, so yes, it's... Uh, Um, so, I don't know, it's, it's, it's bad, and you have bad situations in Somalia and, uh, you know, in Golan Heights and a lot of areas where they create tunnels, they 
hurt kids. You, you've you seen the news. They, there were a few kids that just had, that had just um, had their bar mitzvahs. They went on a, a hiking uh, and they were stoned. They were attacked by Palestinians. You have kids trying to, you know, uh, get back Judea and Samaria and they, they're fighting for things that no one else fights and they're being attacked by Palestinians and you have the UN applying sanctions to those who are trying to defend families. You have Palestinians stab stabbing children. You have Palestinians teaching their children to stab. You have, these are criminals. And the UN expects Israelis to accept them in their territories, endangering their own children. You know, this is a huge humanitarian crisis and no one talks about it. No one cares about it. All they care is about the Sunni Muslims and their, you know, they create their own words. They created their own chaos. They can just expect, ex, uh, escape to other Muslim countries. Jews have nowhere else to go. You had lots of Jews in Arab countries. Little by little, they have been decimated, forced to move to other countries. They have been killed and slaughtered, you know, without mercy, just like you would kill or squash a bug. That's how they're treated treated in Muslim countries. And no one addresses this. The, the situation in the Gaza Strip, the situation around Israel, Israel is just a tiny strip of land, barely enough for all, all Jews. It has a very, very, very fragile situation. It's the only place that is a safe space for Jews. If the UN keeps on going against Israel, they are going to be responsible for the next Holocaust. We see Nazism increasing by the day in Europe and I see this every single day, every single day. The promotion of hateful nonsense towards Jews. You see this in America. You see this in Africa. Yes, even Africans are increasingly anti-Semite. And I'm not just talking about Muslim Africans. I'm talking about non-Muslim Sub-Saharans. So there is an urgency to, to create policies that will prevent more aid crimes towards Jews. So if you're a politician in a country uh, that has a high Jewish population or tradition, you know, uh, traditional Jewish habits and you know, historically was a Jewish stronghold. Or if you are someone who is, you know, pro-Israeli, try to urge your government to become a safe space for um, Jewish refugees, because there may come a day where the UN forces a war on Israel or kind of by neglect causes the Palestinians and other Muslims to invade Israel and kick out and kill Jews. So there needs to be at least a few more countries that are Muslim free and able to take in Jewish refugees. We don't want a World War II. We don't want to, to eradicate such a rich culture from our country our countries and the world and uh, so yeah that's my opinion I know it's a little you know unusual but uh, there's a lot to, to think about and Jewish are peaceful they're smart they're hard-working 
who wouldn't want a, 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 a Jew in their neighborhood? I know there's a lot of propaganda. There is a lot of people using Jews as scapegoats, but it is important to, to, to be um, able to discern what is real and what is propaganda. I know in this day and age it is really hard to, but it's important never forget history. It may repeat itself. They're trying to erase it for one reason. So that's it. Uh, I really wanted to make this point about the UN because there is a lot of corruption going on in the UN. And even if there wasn't any corruption, there are just so many Arab countries that they have a huge weight on UN decisions. And those are always going to be skewed against Israel. So yeah, that's it for today. Goodbye. I hope you liked this video. Please do comment and tell me what I could have said better if I missed some point. And I know I usually, I've been trying to avoid political videos lately, but uh, this had to be said. I know it may be an unpopular opinion, but it is my opinion and I stand by it. And I hope we can still be friends after this. Um, bye, until next time, and great from Donald Trump to not back down to, um, I'm sorry, I had to say this, because it was great that he didn't back down to Hamas blackmail and to all the, the blackmailing from Palestine and all the blackmailing from everyone. He stood by, by what he thought was right, and he is one of the few world leaders that is willing to make justice with Israel and what should have been for the last 70 years. So, that's it for today. Goodbye. I hope to see you next time, and please subscribe, like, comment, and tell me what I can do to improve my channel. I know I haven't been consistent consistent with my uploadings, but I, I'm working on it. Bye. Talk to you later.